Welcome to ISACA's National Capital Area Chapters video series on cybersecurity fundamentals. Bob would like to send the word password to Alice. But he wants that to be a secret word, so he can't simply just send it over to her because he doesn't want anyone who intercepts a message to be able to read it. So Bob needs to do something clever. He needs to take the word password and convert it into something that is not intelligible. In other words, he needs to encrypt the word password. So he takes the word plain text password, subjects it to some clever math encryption, and out comes the ciphertext. So the ciphertext is SDVVZRUG, which he now sends over to Alice. Unfortunately, when Alice receives the text SDVVZRUG, she says, what's that? She needs to know what Bob did to the word in order to be able to reverse the math. So what did Bob do? He took the word password and he simply shifted the letters along by three. And so a P became a QRS, and an A became a B, C, D, and so on. He's simply shifting it along by three. So password becomes SDVV. When Alice receives this message, she simply needs to reverse the math, so she shifts it back, and by the same number which in this case was three and therefore is the key. The key to encrypt and decrypt the message is the same, which is what really defines symmetric encryption. It's using the same key to encrypt as you do to decrypt. So we have the concept of some math, some clever math that takes plain text and turns it into something unintelligible or encrypted text. Most encryption math is well known. So you will hear people mention things like Raindell and Twofish, which are examples of symmetric encryption. The, the best known symmetric encryption algorithm might in fact be the Advanced Encryption Standard, or AES, also known as Raindell which is a specification for encryption of electronic data as established by the U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technologies, otherwise known as NIST, in 2001. AES was adopted by the U.S. government and supersedes the data encryption standard, D DES. So, for instance, if your data is encrypted on your device or on your laptop or you have an encrypted connection back to your bank, in all likelihood, AES is being used. In our example, the key was three. But if you'd simply had to guess what the key was, it wouldn't have taken you too long, as there are only 26 English alphabets. The key space, therefore, is small. Guessing the key is known as a brute force attack. Obviously, a longer key would be harder to simply guess. AES uses quite long keys indeed, 128 or 192 or 256 bit keys. The number of possible keys that you could have with a 128 bit length key is 2 to the power of 128, which is a very large number and is estimated to take 10.79 quintillion years assuming you could test one trillion keys per second. So symmetric key encryption is quick and secure. However, there's a real conundrum here. How does Bob get the key over to Alice or agree a key with Alice without anybody else knowing what the key is? Because the math or algorithms are generally well known so the only thing that stops this evil guy, Fred, from being able to decrypt the ciphertext is the fact that he does not know the key. So if Fred were to obtain or intercept the key, then he too could simply apply this well-known algorithm 
and come back with the original plain text. So, the question remains, how will Bill get the key over to Alice without Fred finding out? So to understand this and more exciting concepts, please watch the rest of our videos in our Cybersecurity Fundamentals series. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel as we add more videos, follow us on Twitter, and read the NCAC newsletter. Thank you for listening to this video on symmetric key encryption. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say.